Guys, my name is Seamus. I'm 28, so I'm actually not that much older than most of you. And therefore, I don't have enough intelligence or wisdom to have pillars on how to live or tips for you like the lads have. I'm also not smart enough to write good poetry, so I don't have any poems. So what can I tell you? So why a relative stranger? What can I tell you in 10 minutes? Um, as I said, I don't really have any principles. I don't have any great three tips on how to live. Instead, what I'll do, I'll tell you my own bit of a story. When I was 11, I lost my mum to suicide. I'm an only child, so therefore, kind of it's my dad and I now. Well, he's remarried, but in my family, it's him and I. And I thought, you know what, you might have a bit of a story to tell about this. So I decided to start writing it, um, and I started to get, get a bit of, I suppose, get a bit of notice and publicity about what I was talking about. And because at that time, I was a young Irish man, and a lot of young Irishmen then, and probably still now, although it's a good bit better, I think, didn't really talk about how they felt inside. So they'll talk about, or they'll go to see a physio if they've hurt their knees, and they need to get back to play a match. But they won't necessarily talk about what's going on inside, maybe, you know? And I just said, you know what, I, I'll try and do that a little bit. And the reason why I had the confidence to do it, and the reason why I can stand in front of a couple of hundred relative strangers to me and say that is because really for one thing when I was about six months after what happened to my mum I went to um, Rainbows Child Counselling Services and basically what we did it was great it was good crack what we did we went around kicking around the soccer ball playing basketball and from time to time then the nun would ask us a few questions she'd literally just ask us how we feel how are you getting on now that dad, is dad has to make dinner rather than mum and I'd be telling him, it's misery, he's not able to cook. So it's crap, I want her to come back and cook, because the dinner is stink. But it was small things like that, and for a few weeks on end, she'd ask us questions. And I started to learn at that age about just answering about how I felt. And I guess in many ways, I probably haven't really stopped, but it took until a couple of years ago to realize that it, um, it's been the single single biggest and best thing that's ever happened that I've ever had to do. Now, I wish to this day I never had to do it. I wish my mum was never gone away, obviously. But even still, it's the best thing that ever happened to me because I learned about speaking about me and about how I feel. And sometimes people, you might be talking to someone they don't necessarily want to hear or listen to it, but a lot of people will. And I've been very fortunate in that sense. And I went around to some schools and largely, mainly to GA clubs and communities where there's a lot of men. Because as I was saying earlier, sometimes men get through to men a little bit easier than maybe women will. And that's what I've been doing. I've just telling a story a little bit like this. And um, 2016, yeah, last year, started during the summer last year, I had a talk and I came away from it afterwards and just said to myself, you know what, did that add a lot of value now to many? It was actually students as well. I said, did that add really much value, or was it just, were they grateful they were out of double mats? But afterwards, I thought to myself, you know what, I'm going to try to do something a little bit different now again. And that's probably what's brought me here. So um, next year, November 2018, I've decided I'm going to run a marathon. Now, lots of people run marathons and that, and I'm trying to raise money for Pieta House doing it, but it's in the Antarctica. So it's a bit of a distance away from here. It's a hell of a lot colder. It's about minus 37 or 38 degrees. You're 43 kilometers, um, and I'm hoping to raise 200,000 euro for Pieta House. Now, if I'm successful, and I've no idea whether I will be or not, no idea, it'll be the biggest solo fundraiser for Pieta House. Now, I'm not telling you that in order to try and sound impressive. I'm telling you it for one, really for one main reason, and it's this. I am frightened of my life at the idea of doing this, right? I hate running. I hate it. I'm, not, I'm slow at it, and I don't like doing it, and I've had knee surgery four times, so it's not good for me to run. But anyway, I'm still going to try and do it. I've, no, I've never raised a cent in my life for a charity up to now. Not one cent have I raised. So I don't know how I'm going to come up the money. I've never been near the Antarctica. I've never been in minus 40-odd degrees. I've never done a marathon. I've no idea how I'm going to do a lot of it but I'm going to figure out a way to do it. And the point I want to make to you, and the point I'll leave you with, have you ever had a time, and you're young yet, the majority of people here, it may not have happened yet, but it will happen in time. You'll say to yourself, I would love to do that, but. 
So we have these limiting beliefs, right? And I just said to myself, I'm sick of saying to myself, I'd love to have done whatever, but I didn't do it. So I just said, right, come on. Cut it, and we're going to do it. So I'm going to do this run. And it's just something different. I'm trying to raise money instead of maybe a lot of talking. But the, the point I want to make to you is, Try and take a leap on that big thing you want to do. You'd be surprised then how it can come around to help. I didn't think I'd end up here. I ended up here out of getting to know a girl in Spain whose brother was talking here on Tuesday, Gavin Hennigan, who said, I should come and talk here, and now I'm here. It's funny. Things happen, and you meet people, and the world will kind of come together to help you do it. But think about it. The things that matter, lads, right? work and all that, we have to do them. But the things that will matter and that you'll, make, you'll get interested in listening to from people and you'll be interesting to listen to are the stories and the things that matter in your life. Not necessarily the qualifications you get to become a chartered accountant or the qualifications to become a solicitor. What will matter is the things that have happened and how you try and give back. So unfortunately, I had no hand act or part to, to, to meet suicide when I was 11. But that was the hand I was dealt. And as a result, I'm trying to do my bit to try and make sure that other families and other people around Ireland, and especially other men in Ireland, don't see that that's the route they have to take if things are tough, that there's another way out. I would imagine a lot of this, people aren't even listening to me. But if one person goes away thinking, you know what, that thing I always wanted to do, I'm just going to drop the word but, and I'm going to try and go do it. As I said, I'm scared of my life about the idea of running in the Antarctic at the moment. I'm shitting it, excuse my French. But eventually, I'll probably be excited about it. But that's just being straight with you. But try and find that thing, whatever it is, and drop the butt and get on with it, okay? Thanks a million for listening to me.